Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Thank you for joining us here on Westerns on the Web for another classic Western film. Here on Westerns on the Web, we believe that Westerns are timeless, that these classic Westerns, that these older ones are timeless entertainment fit for the whole family to see, and they have a lot of good values and lessons to teach. And that's why we're sharing them. Westerns on the Web has literally thousands of Western films in our archives that we're planning on sharing, and some of them are extremely rare films. Kick your boots up, relax, get ready for another action-packed Western, and we'll see you after the show. Company's advertising our ranches for sale. I can't believe it. Well, it's true, all right. Read the notice on the poster. Well, how can they do this to us? We're still fighting our case in court. Luther Sharp must be mighty sure he's going to win that case. I think we should have waited for the court's decision. Why wait? We know what it's going to be. That clause you insert in the contract will hold good in any court. That's a joker that nobody will be able to trump. We'll win by law, all right. Those settlers aren't going to give up without a struggle. I'm prepared for anything. Take a look. I've got our men spotted all over town. I wasn't thinking on bloodshed. It's too late to pull out now. No, it's not that. But the railroad company finds out that we've been feathering our own nests on this land deal. Any reports they get come through me. And as chief of the railroad detectives, I've got full authority to act. So we're sitting pretty. I ain't so sure about that. Now, wait a minute, man. Let's not be too hasty about taking action. Clem Barstow will be back from the county seat pretty soon. He's our lawyer, and he'll tell us what to do. Helen, you'd better wait here for me. Do be careful, Dad. Don't worry, dear. I'll be all right. What happened at the Capitol, Barstow? Well, I'm sorry to report, ma'am. The judge upheld the contracts in favor of the land company. Well, I... That judge is probably in on the swindle. The whole thing's a fraud. He couldn't decide any other way, Newton. The clause that Luther Sharp inserted in that contract is airtight. It gives him the right to get any price he wants to for that land. And you've got to pay it in order to get legal claim. Well, we bought that land in good faith when the railroad company opened it for settlement. Well, we spent all our money building homes and improving the land. Sharp was to sell us that land for $5 an acre. As soon as the railroad company secured its patents from the government. Well, our only chance is to file an appeal with the Supreme Court. Fighting by law ain't gonna get us no words. It's time we took the matter to our own hands. Wait a minute, Sam. Violence will get you no place. Our only chance is to fight this thing legally. Now, we're not going to sit by and let the railroad company drive us from our homes. Are you with me, men? I can't countenance any such action on your part. But I will continue your fight in court. Fighting this thing with words should stop. We should get some action. Yeah, well, 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 go well, got to get you home right away, Helen. What's the matter? I haven't time to explain right now, but I'm afraid there's going to be trouble.
That mob's getting out of hand. Oh, quit worrying. When I fire a shot, that'll be the signal for the boys to cut loose. I'm see of those settlers. I'll round up the boys and have them run the rest of them out of their home. Then you and I can start that real estate boom in Red Rock without any further trouble. find out. It looks pretty bad. Luther Sharp swore out warrants for your arrest. Why, oh, oh, we only depend on our own rights. I know, but you played right into their hands by attempting to attack the land office. Hey, Dick, it'll go against you when your case comes up in court. Well, what do you advise us to do, Barstow? Well, hide out until I get sufficient evidence against Trag and Sharp to block their game. How are you going to do that? I think I know a man who can get that evidence for me. Who is he from? Clem Barstow. He's that lawyer who got us out of that jam over in Nevada, remember? Yeah. What did he say? Yeah, he's in trouble, Fudd. Seems there's a feud going on between the settlers and the railroad over in Red Rock. Uh, no. We don't want to go messing around anybody's private war. We aren't. I'm going to play this as a lone hand until I find out what the situation is. They're riding off and leaving me behind. Why, Billy, we... We've been pals a long time. <laughs> I'll send for you, Fuzz, as soon as I find out what the setup is. So long, Fuzzy. <laughs> it's up to you. I bet 50. I'll see you. What do you got? Three queens. That's good. Your deal's... Seems to stick to my fingers today, including the chips. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one that seems to be having any luck, stranger. Maybe it's because I'm unlucky in love. You might be able to change your luck. I remember that, Rosie. Instead of two, you would have made it. The king was the second card I drew. 
Are you suggesting that I cold decked you? I'm not suggesting. I'm telling you, Tinhorn. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's not healthy to make accusations like that, stranger, unless you can... If I'd have drawn one card, you would have drawn one. I would eight of clubs and you the king. If I'd have stood back, you would have drawn two cards, both the eight and the king. Either way, you would have made your straight flesh. I still say you and the tin horn frame me. Why, you... anybody making a move. I'm not particular who I plant in Boot Hill. Slade, why didn't you stop that stranger? Not me, Trey. That number ain't no stranger to me. Why, that's Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid? Hey, Billy! I want to talk to you. Only one thing talks as far as I'm concerned. Money. Wait a minute. I can promise you a lot of conversation, Mr. Bonnie. We'd better go over in the office and talk. It's more private. That suits me. can use another deputy that's as fast on the trigger as you are. Things seem to be quiet enough around here. How come the railroad needs new detectives? Well, there's plenty of trouble going on underneath the surface. Don't tell them on the little blow-off. What kind of trouble? Well, when the settlers defaulted from their contracts with the railroad company, it was my job to run them off their property. They resisted and several of my men got killed. Warren's received their arrest, but the men took to the hills. And that's where they're hiding out. Where do I come in? I'm going to see every one of those settlers either dead or behind bars. But it's going to take some good men to do it. What about the money? There'll be plenty in it when we find the settlers' hideout. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, as chief of the railroad detectives, I've offered large rewards for the capture of the settlers. You collect the rewards, and we split. It's a pretty tough job for one man. Oh, my men will help you. After what happened at the saloon? <laughs> I'd be afraid to turn my back on you. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. A friend of mine just got out of prison a few weeks ago. He's one of the toughest men in the country. What is he in for? Highway robbery. I told him to stick to safe blowing. That's his specialty. He's one of the best powder men in the West. Say, I can use a man like him. What's his name? What'd you say? What's his name? Uh, Fuzzy Q. Jones. Fuzzy Q. Jones. I'll send for him. Never heard of him. For me. Save it, Fuzz. We've got to get out of here before anybody sees us together. Hey, what in carnation is all the mystery? I haven't got time to explain everything right now. Mr. Barstow, this is Fuzzy Jones. Glad to know you, Mr. Jones. Phil has told me a lot about you. You boy can get acquainted later. Right now, i got a big job for you, Fuzz. I made a deal for you to tie up with a railroad detective. 
Detectives? Uh, you mean like a world star? That's right. Uh, and I gave you a big build-up. Trag, the boss of the outfit, thinks you're plenty tough. So you have quite a reputation to live up to. Tough? Why, well, I'm so tough that the last rattlesnake I bit, he just, just crawled away and died. You're going to need a lot more than that. You're going to need some advanced publicity to convince this Trag that you're as tough as I said you were. <laughs> All he has to do is just take one look at me. That's what I'm afraid of. Now, the stage from Red Rock comes along here any minute now. You're going to hold it up. Single-handed. Yeah, well, that ought to be easy. I, uh... Hey, who... who me hold up a stagecoach single-handed? I'll be there to back you up. How far back? Right back. Well, back or front, I ain't gonna be there. Fuzzy's right, Billy. He can't hold up that stage. It's breaking the law. Yeah, it ain't legal for me to do a thing like that. The gents we're up against aren't so particular about the letter of the law, Mr. Barstow. Two wrongs don't make a right, Billy. This time it might prove an exception to the rule. Now, the money on that stage belongs to Sharp and Trag. It was stolen from the ranchers after they were evicted. I'm afraid we can't get back what is rightfully ours by using those methods, Billy. It's only the beginning. We're going to get everything back. With interest. You stay here, Mr. Barstow. Come on, please. You're on your own. Oh, now, listen. Isn't there some other way I can get a reputation without holding up a stagecoach? First thing you know, this thing's going to wind up with my hab hab obituary. The word's obituary. I'll write it for you unless you get down there and do what I tell you to do. Well, how about a mask? One you got on is all right. Hey, this is my face. Oh, I thought it was a mask. Anyway, I want them to see that homie mug of yours. It's part of our scheme. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll go. But if anything happens to me, you'll be sorry. Oh, oh. Oh, go on, you guys. Now climb over there with your hands in the air. going on here? None of your business. Now, give me that money in the express box. You heard what I said. Give me that money. I'm a tough hungry, I am. I don't want no fooling about it. If anything should happen, why, you're only committing suicide. Get it! Now get back in that coach. On! You get up on your box there, you monkey. Pull out of here, Prado. Now get going. Yeah! Ha! You shoot the law in our own hands like this. I haven't got time to argue now with you, sir. I've got to get Fuzzy into town. So long. Come on, Fuzzy. You know what to do, Fuzz. I'll meet you at the saloon later. Yeah, but supposing somebody recognizes me as the bandit was held up the stagecoach. That's just the idea. If they don't, our whole scheme will fall through. I'll be seeing you, Fudge. I hope. You hope. I hope. Oh, woe is me. Arthur, I think we's in trouble. What in tarnation is all your rush? happens to me. 
You're going to be responsible. Fella Twag was expecting. I'm so hungry. Now stand back, Jim, and give me room. Why am I killing wood out of this here saloon? Give me a drink. My boyfriend, he's got lots of money. Money? Well, I got lots of money, too. Uh, you have lots of money, Why, too? Why, sure. Mm -hmm. Then you are what they call mucho caballero grande, no? No, no. Oh, fuzzy. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two yeses. Uh -huh. You are such a... Hey, never mind that Spanish business, baby. You're just plain rosy or grady to me. Flanagan to you. Flanagan to me? Well, now that we understand each other... <laughs> Sit down. Let's have a drink. Come on, bartender. Bring her up here. <clears throat> Give me a little of that panther. Stagecoach on its way. We were held up and lost the money we were going to ship. Well, what was you doing, picking daisies? Well, I couldn't do anything. The bandit was the toughest two-gun killer I'd ever met up with. What? Talk to me and come over here. I'm busy. That's telling them, Fuzzy. <laughs> All right, beat it, Rosie. You can't talk you to me. You heard me. I said that you. I'm Ward Trang. And this is Luther Sharp. I think you and him met down the road away. Well, what yeah. about it? You can't get away with that money you stole from me. I got it, Evan. It's on your mind. Listen, anybody working for me does nothing on their own hook. Who said I was working for you? Now, this is going far enough. I'm going to get that money back if I have to choke it out of you with my bare hands. Stop! Hey! You try that and I'll 
tear yours off and throw them right back in your face again. What's the matter, killer? You mad? Oh, hello, Billy. <clears throat> what seems to be... I don't know what I'm going to do with you. How many times have I told you to stick in your own... I'm sorry. Oh, come on. Let's go over to Sharp's office and settle this. Oh, there ain't nothing to settle. Hey, you know, the pickings are pretty good around here. Uh, why don't you and me play a lone hand? Well, it won't do any harm to listen to what the gents have to say. No, but you got to talk fast. Because my time's going to be occupied around here for the next few days. I'll see that it is. Now listen, Jones, if you'll do as I say and return the money, you won't lose a thing. Uh, the whole proposition don't make sense to me. Can't you get us through that thick skull of yours the money you stole belongs to me? <laughs> you mean did belong to you. Belongs to me now. And your money to me is just as good as any other fellow. You were sent for because Billy said you could do certain things and do them right. Sure, I got a reputation. When I blows up things, they stay blows. Pile of monkey Jones, that's what they call me. We know all that, but... Hey, I gotta be paid if I'm gonna act like a real detective. I've got my future to think of. Afraid you might be humiliated? Humiliated? No! Embarrassed! Oh, we're settling this thing once and for all. Are you working for me or aren't you? I are. I, I am. Now you're being settled. But I'm keeping the money I got. Uh, give me that. I'll see what I can do with it. Hey, killer. Wait a minute. Wearing one of these things will keep you perfectly safe. Don't you understand? You'll be the law. You ain't fooling me, are you? No. Uh huh? Now, how about a compromise on that money deal? Well, you know, Billy, I'm a fair man. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll leave it up to you. I've been turning that money. I can't do it. You can't. I'll take it easy, Trag. When he's like this, he's dangerous. And he's trying to force him. Well, he can't get away with this. Listen, we can't get. I've got an idea. Why don't you let him keep Shark's money as an advance? Turning in the settlers. Hey, <laughs> you're a wizard. I was just going to suggest that. I read your mind. What do you say? Well, I don't like it. Give us a couple of days to get set. Then I'll guarantee Fuzzy will pay back what he owes. Well, I want you in town by next Wednesday. Because there's liable to be a lot of trouble. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Good. I got some bad news for you, Mr. Barstow. Sharp is selling Clark's place at auction day after tomorrow. What do you know? I'll get even with the railroad company if it's the last thing I ever do. I don't think the railroad's behind this deal to cheat you settlers out of your home. They're fighting us in court. Sharp's working for them. You can't deny that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think there's something funny about those contracts that uh, Sharp gives to the new buyer. The railroad issued the deeds on every section that's been resold. Did you ever check on them? No, they're mostly out of town folks. Well, it should be hard to check on one of those deeds. All we have to do is buy in on Clark's place. You realize how much money that would take? At 65 an acre, about $40,000. Well, 
Any of you men know where Tag and his outfit hid those cattle he stole from you? Sure. sure. In the canyon behind Mel Turner's place, under guard. It shouldn't be hard to raise $40,000 on them. It won't be. Yeah, but but these like men it. are fugitives already. You can't ask them to commit any more illegal acts. But Mr. Basho, cattle rustling won't make it any tougher on them. I'll say right. it won't. You think we can get that hurt? You bet we can. Yeah, sure we can. can. Clark, Fuzzy, and I will take care of those guards. You men round up those cattle. We'll meet you on the road. Right. You best get going. Now, I don't like the idea of taking the law into our own hands. Uh, it's too late to talk about that now. Besides, we haven't any choice. Come on, Fuzz. those cattle hard, Newton. The boys know that. I'll run our head to Capital City and make the deal with the bank. Fuzzy, meet you at Eagle Rock. Right. Alright, what am I bid? 
Who's going to give me $5,000? I'll say 5000 Don't be bashful, folks. I've got 5000 bit. We'll make it 10 I'm afraid the money will get here too late. 5000 bit. Who'll say 10 I did. Twenty-two thousand dollars, Mr. Marto bid. Who raised Mr. Marto's bid? Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-six thousand. Twenty-six thousand, Mr. Marto bid. Who's going to raise Mr. Marto's bid? I hear twenty seven. Pete, get out there and outbid Barstow. Mr. Barstow bid twenty-six thousand dollars. Do I hear twenty-seven? Do I hear twenty-seven thousand? Thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. Do I hear thirty-one thousand? Stop him from bidding. Who? Me? How? I'm not particular. Just stop him. Thirty-one thousand. Thirty-one thousand. Who raised it to thirty-two thousand? company knows the land's being sold for exorbitant prices, in spite of the fact they offered to sell it back to these settlers for five dollars an acre. I guess you're right. Let me have a look at it. Oh, oh you're a wet and a bull in the china shop. Uh, I'm going to get you a wet nurse so they can follow you around. I'm sorry. You're sorry. Not going to help matters any. Say, look at this. Can't you see traces of figures underneath the amount $36,000? See, there's a three and a two and two zeros. Yes, someone erased the original figures and wrote in the new ones. Then the railroad company think they were selling the land for $5 an acre. Let's see. 640 acres times five is $3,200. That was the original amount on this deed. I'll examine the courthouse records and see if any of the other deeds that Sharp sold have been tampered with. If so, I'll contact the president of the railroad company. That's a good idea. Hey, I just received this telegram from Mr. Trainer of the railroad company. Yeah, a letter from Clem Barstow. States there are irregularities in your handling of the land division. I'm leaving immediately for Red Rock to investigate the matter. Signed, John Trainer, vice president of the Western Railroad Company. Evidently, Barstow has discovered that we changed the figures on that deed. We got to get him out of the way before Trainer gets here. If they meet, it'll blow the works sky high. Blow the works. Say, Jones can do that first. Where is he? Well, probably in the saloon. He's been hanging around with that girl every chance he gets. Well, come on, let's get him. 
Come on, Fuzzy, give your baby a little kiss. No. <laughs> oh, don't be like that. Oh, no. Just a teensy-weensy little one? No, not a teensy-weensy little one. Please. Give your baby a little kiss. No. Oh! Break it up. I got an important job for you, Joan. Hey, get, 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 get this off. I want you two boys to help Jones blow off the Barstow house. And make sure that Clem Barstow is in it when it blows up. Hey, now, wait a minute. That's going to take a lot of planning and, a, and, a, and a thinking. All you need is powder and fuse. Yeah, but we ain't got no powder. Pete will get that for you. I, I, you sure you got enough? Yes, we got plenty. Uh, Oh. Uh, I'll be right back. Uh, Rosie's got my back all. Oh. Oh. Rosie, I want you to do something for me. Get this thing off my finger oh, first. Yeah. Ah. Uh, look. You have this money if you'll take a message to Billy the Kid for me. All right. Tell Billy that Trag and his men are planning a big blowout. It has to be a surprise party for Clem Barstow. Got it? Yes. Mm. Everything's all set. All right, pick up the powder at the hideout and beat it for Clem Barstow's range pronto. Right. Well, what are you waiting for? Get going. Trag will stop at nothing to prevent you from meeting trainer. I'm going to stand my ground and fight this thing legally. I'm sorry you feel that way because I'm going to have to do something I didn't want to do. Well, what do you mean? I'm arresting you for running off with the cattle that belonged to the railroad company. Why, uh... So you're one of Trag's hired killers after all. I might have guessed this was all a scheme to gain my father's confidence. I'm doing a job, Miss Helen. Now, I think you'd better be going, sir. I'm taking you into Red Rock. Don't leave it, and the kid's with him. We got to tell Craig about this pronto. You sure messed up things in grand style by arresting Barstow? I knew he was dangerous, so I figured it'd be a good idea to get him out of the way. That's why I framed him. Well, you meant all right, but you spoil our plans for removing him permanently. Well, why didn't you let me in on your plans? It's too late to talk about that now. We got to get Barstow out of the way before Trina gets here. Pete, Biff, round up the boys. We're going to hold a real necktie party for Mr. Barstow. Now, wait a minute. We can't do anything out in the open. We won't be connected with it. We'll have the men spread reports that Barstow double-crossed the settlers. And that he was the one that caused all the trouble. Now, the boys will have to make it look good. You know, stir the people up. Talk about hanging, lynching, all that. You understand? Yeah. And the signal for the rush on the jail will be two taps on the fire dog. You handle that. All right. Now, let's get busy. We haven't got much time. them from giving a signal until I get Barstow out of jail. And leave it to me. But I tell you, Sheriff, I deliberately framed Barstow. 
I knew that Drag was out to get him, so I thought jail would be the safest place. I can't let Bart stop just on your say-so. It's got to be done by the regular process of law. Yes, and while the law's taking its course, that mob's going to come busting in here. The man's life is in danger. You're going to have to release him. Ain't nobody going to take a prisoner away from me without a fight. I'll round up a posse and protect the jail. Yeah, you're making a mistake. And I'll see if I can round up any men for you. Uh, hey, <clears throat> uh, I just guess it works. Oh, that's very simple. All you got to do is bang on it a couple of times, just like this. <laughs> hey, you don't do that. You, you start the signal too soon. Well, maybe you're right at that. <laughs> Judge, you and Tex take the back. You boys cover the window. Just a minute, Miss Bosco. It's not safe for you to be in town today. Why not? There isn't time to explain right now. Well, it's about time to start the riot. Hey, what time is it? Quarter after one. Quarter after one. Oh, hey, that turnip's no good. It's way off. Well, you're crazy. It's right on the dot. I said it was off. Do you want to make something? You're trying to tell me what to do? Yes. I owe you one from the other day. That's the signal for the mob to start storming the jail. Miss Helen, you've got to get out of here. Let go of me. Now, you've got to listen to reason. They mean business. We're out number five to one. Well, it's nothing to do but fight it out. I'm not so sure about that, Sheriff. No use risking lives. I'm taking Bosco out of here. Open that cell. Hurry up, quick about it. <laughs> Gotta make a run for it, Bosco. Horses out and back. Come on, hurry. Yeah. Come Bosco over to us, Sheriff. Well, we'll tear down the jail and take it. You're making a mistake, man. Marco ain't here. The sheriff's putting a breath on it. There goes Marco and Billy the kids with him. Come on, man. Get on your horse. Hey, look. Kids beat it with Barstow. Well, why don't you go after him? Wait a minute. If we can stop training from reaching town, Barstow will keep. Let's take him off the stage. Red Rock again. Now I'll never be able to meet Mr. Trainer. 
You don't have to go into Red Rock to meet him. What do you mean? We're going to head off that stagecoach. But it's that badge. Come on.
generous in restoring the settlers' homes to them, Mr. Trainer. I don't know how we'll ever thank you. I think you should thank the little kid. <laughs> well, it was more than anybody would have done under the circumstances, Mr. Trainer. Besides, Fuzzy deserves a lot of the credit, too. Hey, Fuzz. Come on over here. Sure. Wasn't that just very enjoyable, wonderful, classic entertainment? And it's timeless. Westerns are timeless. Thank you for joining us here on Westerns on the Web. Make sure you check back with us often because we're going to have a lot more Western films for you to view here online for free. I'm Bob Terry. Have a great day, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail.